Books and films are so so different in the medium, and you can do certain things in books that you can't do in movies, and vice versa. What was the hardest thing to translate to film on the host, and then what do you think the host would not work in the book world? Um, I think that the hardest thing ended up being just shortening an enormous book down that much. But the uh, thing that everyone anticipated that was going to be most difficult was having um, the two characters in one body and having an actress who could do that. Uh, but once we found Saoirse, we didn't really have to worry about it anymore. It's just kind of amazing. Now, what in the film world do you think would not work in the book world? I don't know. I don't think there's anything that you can't really do in fiction. Um, it's sometimes the, the visual you're relying on, if the uh, reader's mind could do something really amazing more than the book could, you know, I think what Andrew did with the visuals in this was really beyond what I pictured, um, so it's kind of up to what the readers see. Now for Jake and Max, uh, and I'll then open up to the crowd, what is the responsibility of filling the shoes of a character who people have imagined? when reading in the book? I mean, like, do you go online, look at blogs, and, like, you know, wonder how they're going to picture this person? Like, what is the responsibility for you as an actor? Um, there's, there's a certain expectation that one is expected to live up to, which is a definite uh, bit of pressure. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, all, you, all we can really go off of is the script, and we're so lucky to have the author of the books with us on set every day. Um, and, you know, that doesn't hurt. She knows, she knows what's going on. Uh, but she actually gave us a lot of freedom, too, to discover for ourselves. I remember quite early on, I went up to Stephanie on set and said, could you please give me some guidance? I'm terrified. Am I getting this all wrong? And you just said, no, you were cast for a reason. Uh, we trust your interpretation. And that, you know, gives you a lot of confidence to go forward. Hey, anyone, questions from the crowd? Just raise your hand, I'll call on you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, so is there anything missing from the movie that she really wishes there from the book? Um, I miss the character Walt. I miss the, you know, the death scene because it's fun and sad. It makes me cry when I write it, you know. And so it was important to me, and it just wasn't something that we had time for. And I think I also miss the soccer plane because I think that would have been a lot of fun. I think that these guys probably would have had a lot of fun with that too. Next question. Crowd. Uh, yes, ma'am. Was this shot inside of an actual cave, or was it all on a set? The interiors were inside a soundstage in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, a couple of different sound stages, and uh, but the exteriors were all shot in New Mexico, out in uh, this Navajo Nation land, this really unadulterated land. The cave set, though, was enormous. It was like going. I mean, it wasn't. When you think of the set, you know, it's like this little small thing. It was a three-story construct. It was amazing. It was all there. Everything but the mirrored ceiling was there. So it went pretty high. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, Stephanie, I have a question for you. In, um, in the other books that you've written, obviously everyone knows a lot of those books. If one of the characters in those books could have had an internal dialogue happening in his mind or her mind, which one do you think would be the most fascinating? Oh, see, that's subjective. Because I know a lot of people, I know what the answer would be that a lot of people want to, to hear. Um, but each character has kind of their own thing going on, and at different points in the story, there's always someone who has kind of the freshest viewpoint or the most funny, which is what I'm usually drawn to. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I know it's Twilight. You said there were some things in the screenwriters that were you kind of thought, wow, why didn't I think to do it that way? That would be great. You know, doing that way, there's something that's interesting. Yes, actually. Um, I think probably the only thing that I've ever had where I wished really like the concept had made into the book. Andrew took the non-violence of the souls one step further. And in the novel, the Seekers are kind of forced to use guns against their will somewhat because they are they have to deal with these violent, awful humans because we're so we're big scary monsters. And exactly. Um, and and with Andrew's world, they don't even go. They just have their their sprays, and it's totally kind of clean and painless. And and I, I loved that. I thought that would have been great. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. The glasses. Yes. See, why don't you just ask me who my favorite kid is? Um, it doesn't really work that way. You have a lot of people that you get involved with when you create fictional people. Um, with Twilight, you know, I don't know, sometimes you feel like uh, one of your kids is getting picked on, and you get extra defensive over that one or this one. Um, but all of them I love in their own way. Even the bad guys, there's stuff to love about them. With the host, um, at different moments, I mean, I love Judd. 
he, he seems like he should be real. Like, I, I really must know him somewhere. But then I also love, you know, Jared and, and Ian and obviously Wanda. I think I feel like Wanda is the one that I kind of most want to hang out with, or at least have as a friend. What is the importance for all of you uh, of separating this project from Twilight? I mean, obviously, they, they when they're promoting it, they're going to say from the author of the Twilight Saga, but for you as actors and for you as Stephanie, what is the importance of separating from that element? Or do you, do you think it's important to use that for promotional elements? I mean, there's no way to separate. I wish. I would love to do this movie in a vacuum because it's completely different. I mean, the feel of it, I feel like it's a much more mature story. Um, I, I this is this is kind of my baby making this one. I love this this story particularly, and uh, and so it'd be great if it wasn't compared because you know with all the Twilight love that's out there, there's also an equal amount of Twilight hate, and so then that kind of becomes involved with this story as well, which is too bad. On the other hand, if it weren't for Twilight, this might not have been made. So then you have to take the good with the bad. Uh, questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. I had been hoping, <laughs> hoping to have it out before this one came out, um, but time has not been super helpful <coughs> to that goal. I'd love to. I don't. I don't really think I would um, go straight to a script. I like the book to be out first. That's you know that's the only way people really get the chance to create their own story and their own viewpoint. Question? Uh, yes, ma'am. The host came out of extreme boredom. I was driving from Phoenix to uh, Salt Lake City, and I don't know if you ever get over to that side of the country, but it's nothing. She knows. It's desert. It's nothing. There's nothing to look at, nothing to see. Um, so uh, I was really bored, and I used to, we did a lot of car trips when I was a kid. I used to tell myself stories, and this one kind of happened. And the original idea was the idea of two people one in one body in love with the same person. And then the rest of the story kind of came from there. But I did write that one chronologically, which I've gotten stuck doing now. It's a lot slower, but I can't seem to break out of it. It's a little bit annoying. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Sister Maria, um, how long did it take you to write The host took about a year. Um, I was doing it while I was also editing. So it took the longest out of all my books, but they seem to get longer each one as they happen. Um, I have one more question. Um, I actually was teasing uh, some kids at a signing uh, yesterday, yesterday um, that I was going to have a little like timer thing, and every time someone mentioned it, I would start the clock over again. But that's just being mean. No, it's just I'm not. I'm not in the vampire world. It's it's become kind of a mixed place for me, and so I I really had to take some time away from vampires. I don't know when I'll get back there. I know everybody wants it. Believe me, my mom reminds me all the time. <laughs> Steph, you mentioned chronological order, and I wanted to ask you about like nonlinear filmmaking as well. When you're writing like this book, do you write this particular book in chronological order, or do you jump around? And as actors, when you have to shoot nonlinear, how do you get emotionally to a point in the film if you haven't shot the previous elements? Um, you, you've got to know your script inside and out front ways and back ways. That's the, for me, that's the only way, personally, um, to know, to understand exactly what has happened and what has yet to happen. Um, it is a very strange thing, and it's a miracle that it all kind of comes together in the end. But uh, And also, it's quite easy to be domestic about these things. But you've got to take into account things like every member of your family, every friend you've ever had, no longer exists, and that the world, as you know it, is over. And you've got to get your head over those big ideas. And once you do, finding those emotions comes that little bit easier. When I first started writing, I, I think with New Moon and Eclipse, I did write like a movie, actually. And I hadn't really thought about that. I did the same thing where I just went to the most exciting scenes first and then did the blind ones later. And uh, I, But the first time I was on a movie set, that was the thing that surprised me the most was that okay, now we're doing this huge emotional scene and it's the first day of shooting. You have no time to build up to that place with the actors, and it's just amazing to me that they can turn it on and be where they need to be. Um, was it difficult for you guys? It's, it's always quite a stressful thing, the casting audition. You know, you, you do a tape and you send it off into the ether and you hope it comes back with some good news attached to it. Often you wait a couple of weeks at the time. Uh, 
Yeah, and it did for me. I guess it did for you as well. We we go in and we we do chemistry tests, which are always quite nerve wracking. And then you have to wait a little bit longer. And then you hear things in the news, and it becomes more and more stressful. But then finally, you get the phone call, and it becomes a good day. <laughs> yeah, I had originally went in for Jared in the beginning. Uh, you know, I wanted to shoot guns and drive cars. Uh, but then I got a call from Andrew Nichol, the director, and he said, I want you to go in for Ian, and here's why. And uh, he gave me a few reasons, and, and the big one was uh, he was fascinated by this interspecies love, this human falling for this alien, and that sort of clicked with me right away. So then I went and read with Sersha, and our screen tests were, were intimate scenes, where they like the date scene, the kissing scene. Um, so... <laughs> So it's a bit strange, uh, but same thing. And a few weeks later, you find out you, know, you got to pack your bags because you're going to New Orleans, Baton Rouge. <laughs> they both had to make out with Sersha, I think, the first time they met her. <laughs> well, no, you'd met her before. We, yeah. So it was kind of like the second date for you guys. You guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. first date. Yeah, it was a bit intense, forced intimacy. And you're being judged on your kissing, and that's really <laughs> nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, in the hat. I got involved with the producing because, um, I mean, if you'd written a story and you really loved it, and they said, we're going to make a movie out of it, and you can come and watch and maybe get involved if you want to, would you say no? I just, I mean, I couldn't. It was it was really exciting um, for the one part, and then as I got more involved with the movie making, um, it's its own kind of creativity. It's not as easy a thing as writing because there's so much more compromise. I mean, in a book, you can be like... And this person's invisible and they can fly. And then a movie is like, sorry, the budget will not allow for flying. So you're going to just have to, he's going to have to fly a plane or something. Um, it's, and so that's hard, but it is just the coolest thing to be able to find an actor who then steps into the role and, and you see your character come back. It's really amazing. Um, it's, it's kind of addictive in some ways. Uh, Ma'am, the blue. I wish I could do that. I can't write short to save my life. Once I get started, just it never ends. Um, I, I always feel like it's really important to write for yourself and to not worry about an audience and not worry about, oh, should I be sending this off to a publisher? And what is a publisher looking for? If I'd gotten online before I started writing and read what a book was supposed to be, particularly for a young adult audience, it's supposed to be 50 to 70,000 words, I would have quit because I'd done it wrong. <laughs> and so I'm glad I didn't look until it was too late. Oh, before we before we started filming, yeah. Um, before the audition, I got halfway through the book, as you most of you all probably know, it's quite a long book. And I'm quite a slow reader, so, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I finished it. <laughs> uh, I didn't have time to read it before the audition, or listen to it before the audition is maxed it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, I locked myself in my room for three days to a week and just plowed through it. You listen to it on the audio? I, I had to go to the dentist for, for a very long procedure. Uh, it was four hours, I think, and I thought, hey, I could get 200 pages done if I get the audio book. See, I, I listened to part of it, but it drove me crazy, because how many, of you, is not so how many of you thought that the word was pronounced Chala? Are there any desert people here? It's Choya. And she kept saying Chala. It drove me nuts. They didn't do the research, I guess. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're in the back, yes. Um, well, I did one two summers ago. Uh, one of my really good friends wrote a book called Austin Land, which is a super fun little farcy romantic comedy. And uh, we made it into a movie that uh, we just sold at Sundance. And so I think it's coming out end of summer, which would be great. Which It was really fun. Doing a comedy is a completely different experience for me, and it was hilarious. <laughs> if you could do the opposite and take any classic film of all time that you love and then translate it to a book... Which one would it be? Does it have to be a classic? Any movie you want. I would totally, if I was going to write fan fiction, it would totally be like born fan fiction. Yes. Absolutely. I'm awesome. obsessed with the born movies. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I geek out later. All right. All right. Um, yes, Chuck and Shirt. Yes. Well, so far it's 
been a really great experience. I mean, when we were first looking into this, a lot of the bigger studios um, did not understand the concepts, um, and they didn't understand how we were going to do the Wanda Melanie relationship. They kept thinking it was all going to be about special effects and and being inside her head, and there were some really weird ideas out there. Um, and we said, no, no, this is just a performance thing. This is not going to be special effects, and so they didn't get it. Um, Open Road got it, which was a big deal, and then they kind of have a cool way that they're doing things, and so we're, we were excited to try something a little bit different. This movie's all been done very differently from the, the get-go, and it's been a good experience. Her inner monologue was all with herself, so she had pre-recorded the Melanie dialogue, and then they put a little earpiece in her ear, uh, so she'd be in scenes wearing this while she was doing scenes with us, when, when she had to communicate with, with Melanie. Yeah. Uh, in the back, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Stephanie, you said with Twilight, when you kept the romance and kept it pretty straight, this one's a little bit more adult. How did you feel about that? Where were you going to draw the line with that? You know, it, I don't feel like I, we ever really worried about that. It, it follows the book, I think, pretty carefully. Um, the relationships are kind of developed the same way. It is a more grown-up story, um, and it's in a much more extreme circumstance. Um, and I, I was always really satisfied with how it was in the book, and I felt like they did a good job of just getting that feel in the movie. More questions? Uh, you all in the back, yes. What's your next uh, book going to be about? You've done Aliens and Vampires. I'm working on an Alien sequel. It's really, really slow going. Um, I know that some of the people that we've worked with on the movie would be really excited to have it go a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't... Let me think about that for a second. Ask another question. I'll get back to you. I've got to think. Um, yep, yeah, ma'am. Um, yeah, so I'm back to Twilight again. Sorry. Um, the, uh, we thought that maybe it would be a good idea, or fun, I don't know if you can get back to this and stomach it, but uh, maybe having uh, each character, you know, writing a book on from their perspective and how they got there and what their life was like and everything. Because we're very, um, you know, on the have to admit, adult and Twilight fan, and uh, my room has done um, Twilight stuff, and um, embarrassing at my age. But, uh, you know, second childhood, this kind of thing. But, uh, you know, we would like to, you know, see what the background of everybody is, and, you know, we're interested in the stories and how it's pretty to expand it. Well, I wrote it at my age, so don't worry about it too much. Um, it would be lovely to have the time to do that. Um, that would take an incredible amount of time and a lot of focus. Um, and honestly, I just, that is not where my heart is right now. Um, maybe someday I'll, I would love to get back and do Edward's story. It would make my mom really happy. A lot of other people would love me better. Um, it, would be, it would be great, but it's something that's just, there's going to have to be a lot of time. I just did realize the other day that my youngest son will be gone in eight years, and I'll be like, free. So maybe not. And to answer your question, Esme. Two more questions. Two more questions. Um, you. Yes, ma'am. So what was the hardest scene in the film, and what was the hardest? I know what the hardest scene to be in was. It's a, it's a shot that actually did not make the film. Uh, Max got his driver's license on the film. <laughs> Which led them to believe it would be a good idea to have him drive a World War II passenger seat, uh, going as fast as he can uh, out of the cave. Uh, but he managed not to flip it and not kill us. Very good drive. Very good drive. But it was slightly terrifying slightly. because not only was there the entire crew watching me with the evil eye, but Sasha's very own father, who was communicating as a effectively as possible, he would kill me. He would strip every inch of flesh from my bones if anything should happen to his daughter. Unfortunately, it was okay. But, uh, I guess, was that the hardest scene or the funnest scene? Um, the funnest scene for me was uh, uh, Ian and Wanda's first date uh, out on the, uh, the plateau because that was that happened to be our last day of filming too, so it was kind of bittersweet and, and it was a nice scene and the sun was going down and uh, by the end of it, everyone was hugging and crying, and uh, I mean, it was.
was, uh, it was it was a fantastic way to end the whole experience. All right, last question. Gonna make this good. All right, all right, little girl. I I can't see. Oh, see. oh there you are. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Very good question. <laughs> this, this is what we have to work with. Um, it's complicated. Uh, it, I would love to have, obviously, it would really mess things up if we couldn't get everyone back. I mean, it almost would be, I mean, do you keep going forward if you can't have the right family? It's one of those questions. But hopefully, these guys will be It'll nice. To the right deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm back, Stephanie. Aw, see? I'll take Max's place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so settled. Okay, okay. Right, well, thanks everybody for coming out. Please tell everyone about the host. Tweet about it. Everything. Facebook. Promote it. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.